I, I will show you how we can improve the Dash QoS by dropping packets in programmable data planes. Uh, we know that the, the video service is dominating internet traffic and uh, about this idea, there is a common sense that ABR solved the problem. Uh, but, uh, for example, in video streaming, in video services, we have a lot of problems and two types of them, for example, pixelized uh, video quality and rebuffer are uh, two uncommon problems. Essentially, ABR not solve the problem. So, what is the problem? Where is the problem? My Wi-Fi signal, or I need upgrade or change my internet plan, my internet connection, or maybe in router queues. So, this is a big picture of our motivation. This, uh, these are the problems that we are trying to solve. Yeah. And this is the main idea about our, our presentation, our demonstration. We know that internet was designed as a best effort packet switching. And in bottleneck conditions, the tail drop approach is used to discard packets. We know that tail drop causes TCP global synchronizations that's not good to to video services mm. dash or M mpeg dash is one technology that trying to to mitigate uh, uh, these characteristics of a best effort packet switching but dash not solve the problem in bruce's Peng paper uh, there uh, there is one hypothesis that dropping packets are not bad for video services. And th this is hypothesis that we want to validate, we want to analyze in these de in this de uh, demonstrations. In our previous work, we show correlations be uh, between QDEF uh, in the router's interfaces and metrics from dash QoS on a uh, video player. One important concept about your demonstration is active queue management. Active queue management, it's a policy used to mark and drop packets before the buffer is full. In the left side, we have the tail drop approach. In tail drop approach, when the buffer is full, the next packet will be dropped uh, or discard by the tail. With AQM in the right side, we can select one packet uh, inside of the, the queue of the buffer and pro using probabilistic or some strategy uh, uh, to remove this packet uh, before the buffer is full. In this work, in this demonstration, we propose and we will show uh, I read algorithm, a uh, Ingers read algorithm, random error detection. I will show you some fundamental concepts to understand better our demonstration. The first of them is ad uh, adaptive bitrate streaming or ABR. In ABR environment, for example, we have Dash technology. We have one Dash server that encodes the video in various levels or in various quality levels. For example, in this situation, one Dash server encodes one same video in three uh, video quality levels. For example, in high level, in medium level, and in low level. In the video client, request the video streaming. The dash server send to the, the video client the 
MPD file. MPD file is one file. It's a description file about the video quality levels that Dash Server has at this time. So it's it's like a self-service menu. Video clients choose the video flavor according to the load or according to adaptive logic that the video client is using. And their server select the chunk of the video file and send to the video client. Okay, according to the load or according to the metrics that the video client client is seen in the in the video player, the video client can observe the MPD file and change the resolution, change the video quality, yeah, uh, to or a medium quality or low quality or high quality. Well, the important concept about uh, re regarding our demonstration is data plane programmability. Data plane programmability is one technology that uh, that are that is flexibility and improvements in packet process pipeline. And P4 is, is the most preeminent language to programmable data plane. Okay, so P4 defines a data plane base uh, a data plane pipeline based on a match action architecture. Okay, specifies the packet process behavior for a variety of targets like ASIC CPUs and PUs. The execution of a P4 program follows a simple abstract forward model and for each target we have one architecture yeah and this architecture uh, is formed by blocks so or components block blocks or components and in this architecture we have programmable components or programmable box blocks and no program programmable components or no programmable blocks. For example, in view one model architecture that there is an architecture for uh, BMW2 soft switch, we have as programmable components one programmable parser, one programmable ingress, one programmable egress, and one programmable the parser. We can observe, for example, that the traffic manager is one component that is not programmable. In our demonstration, it's so important to observe the egress block. Why? Be uh, because in the egress in the egress block is a component that we can observe that we can see the queue related information. Okay. So the queue metrics, the queue metadata uh, are available only in the egress programmable component. This is a key point of our demonstration. So I read, uh, the, I read steps. We can observe in this, in this picture, the egress block, okay, and the egress block the traffic manager and the queue subsystem aren't programmable so we can't program about these blocks okay so in the first step the packet arrives on the switch and the output port is defined it's like a ipv4 forwarding okay it's a forwarding decision uh after this i read check if the drop flag is on or off. The drop flag is one structure that mapping the state, the congestion state of the output ports. Okay, so if this structure uh, that mapping the state of the output ports is on or off, I read will perform some tasks. Okay. Uh, 
uh, as this is a first packet crossing or enter in the switch pipeline, all drop flags for all ports for the switch are off. So the packet cross the traffic manager, okay, and is enqueued to a specific queue related to output port. And at this moment, the packet gets queue metadata. For example, queue occupants, queue def, uh, queue timestamps. Okay, we have some metadata that are provided from architecture view model that the packet gets this metadata and carry during the switch pipeline. At the egress, I read extract the queue metadata from the packet and compute the queue average, the line seven in our algorithm. Okay. If the queue average is below the minimal threshold, the packet goes ahead to the next hope. Okay. If the queue average is above the minimal or maximal threshold, the packet can be cloned with certain with a certain probability. So it's like a flip a coin, and what I read will decide if this packet uh, can be cloned or not. This is so important because, for example, at this moment, I already know that we have congestion in this queue. So, why not I read decide, for example, to drop this packet at this moment? We conjecture that at this moment, this specific packet consume the resource, uh, consume the switch pipeline resource. So, this packet should go ahead. Okay, should go to the next hop. Uh, if this packet, if I read decided that this packet can be cloned, we clone this packet at the egress pipeline, preserving the output port metadata, and we recir recirculated the cloned packet. So the original packet is sent to the next hope, no adding delays, okay? And the clone packet is recirculated to the ingress pipeline. Here, we are using one internal loopback port exclusive to these tasks, to, to this task, okay? It's a recirculation. In the ingress pipeline, I read verifies the output port from the cloned packet and turn on the drop flag. Okay, and this clone packet is dropped at the inverse. The next packet, the future packet, to the same output port will be dropped because our drop flag for this specific port is on. After drop packet, I read turn off the drop flag. Here, our evaluation, yeah, our demonstration is a, a, a CDN. It's like a CDN, okay. In our demonstration, is based on the fact that there is a correlation between QDEP and the dash QoS, for example, frames per second. We want to verify if probabilistic drop can be useful to dash QoS. We will analyze IRED versus tail drop approach. Uh, the dash CDN server offers three video quality levels. Video encodes with three frames per second, 24 frames per second, and 18 frames per second. We have in the background load generators create a periodical noise on, in the network according to the sinusoid function, okay? Consuming the same video streaming. We measure the frames per second and the cached video, uh, video 
a variable in client's buffer. So let's go to our demo. In our demo, we can observe on the left side the I read video player and in the right side the tail drop video player. Okay. Uh, in the right side, we have the graph of the frames per second player, okay? And in the right side, we have the uh, uh, cached video in the client buffer. In the background, we have the lower generators creating noise in this network, okay? In this scenario, we can observe the... If, According to the load is increasing, for the tail drop video client, the cache video is decreasing and the frames per second is decreasing too. But with iRED solution, with in iRED video player, the frames per second are fixed in the rise, uh, right resolution and the client buffer it's fixed it's fixed to okay it's not decreasing as uh tail drop approach so we can observe that i read improve these two metrics of dash of dash service frames per second player and uh, the cache available in the video client. So our conclusions uh, I read improve uh, improves the dash QoS in terms of frames per second played and cache a video on the local buffer and with minimal overhead in the worst case only 0.038% of, of the recirculated packets consumes only 152 megabits per second from the recirculation port okay it's a minimal overhead. The next steps of our research are, for example, evaluate our read in real rad, ha, uh, hardware, for example, Tofino, and <coughs> evaluate our read have a mix of different application flows. Uh, thanks in Piki and CAPS, uh, uh, this work was partially funded by CAPS and Saint Piki, and more information our website. Thank you.